Jesteśmy na PGA 2015 i mamy przyjemność porozmawiać z Pawłem z SES Software, który jest, który jest właścicielem, tak? jest szefem w studiu, który tworzy grę American Track Simulator, w tym przypadku, bo to jest premierowa gra, która pojawia się na PGA, również Euro Track Simulator i mamy okazję porozmawiać troszeczkę o tym, jak to się wszystko zaczęło, ponieważ y, mało osób chyba też wie, jak to, a jest dużo fanów w Polsce tej gry. Uh, so, um, hi, first of all. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> And um, I, I've said that, uh, you know, many people here in Poland plays, played, uh, played a game, Euro Track, or, or maybe in the future American Track uh, simulator. And uh, there are many fans, so can you tell us a little bit more how it started, how, how the game, how you come up with an idea of, of this kind of game? Well, that would be going back a long time in history. The studio has actually been established in, I think, 1998. So that's almost two decades. And we started as a, what we thought, technology company making engines before thinking that it's better to make full games. Uh, the early games were made on contract for American publishers. And these were really small, small projects that were sold at cheap prices back then. The budget software was a specific niche on the market. And one of the projects that came our way was a truck simulator. We got one sentence kind of uh, concept that we should develop and evolve into something bigger. And that's how our first contact with a truck simulator was established. It wasn't, to be honest, coming from us. It was coming from the outside as an inspiration. We talked, we took on the topic. We expanded on it, we created a game called Hard Truck 18 Wheels of Steel and we are talking really early 2000s, like really over a decade ago and we found out that the reception from players of the game was way above what anybody was expecting and the publisher wanted a sequel and another sequel and another year another sequel so we were, we were finally realizing that we are in a category of in a subgenre of, of games that is very strong, that is very loyal fans, that is uh, very attractive to a specific uh, group of customers. And we never came back, we were staying loyal to make more of these games. And eventually with the generation of the Euro Truck Simulator 1 games, we started to make these games on our own without any involvement of publishers. It's us now making the decisions and also bearing the risks on our own shoulders. But it works for us and we, kind of for the loyalty that we see from our players, we give the loyalty back by developing more, more and more of these games. What do you think of the whole trend of simulator kind of games? This, is this a good topic for, for, for gamers? I mean, for the perspective of, of the track simulator, but you know that even it is an even GOAT simulator game and, and this kind of stuff. So what, what do you think of this whole trend? Because, I mean, like past five years, maybe this is the uh, kind of time that it developed so much. What do you think about it? Well, for me, it's, it's both welcome and strange in some ways as a, as a gamer, because uh, Some of these simulators go really deep into one particular area that may not be attractive to too many people. Uh, we have been one of the early players in the simulation area. Uh, we see that these games are mostly played by, at least from our experience, older players or younger kids. They are not so much played by the typical 15, 18-year-old player who looks for adrenaline-filled experience. They are more calm and more relaxing way of spending time. And there's definitely a lot of players out there, you know, Sims are a great example for attracting kids. But there are also things like Fly Simulator, which is a mature software that attracts mostly people with deep interest into the topic. So it covers a, quite a wide spectrum of players that wouldn't be probably called or considered considering players, considered players Otherwise, if they didn't attract, were not attracted to the uh, gaming area by the specific niche of simulator. Ga 
for more people that are not so familiar with with the game itself um, what would you tell what are the uh, immersion aspects that you know are moved to from the reality to the to the gameplay is it more a game for a keyboard or is it more a game for a wheel is it's like that you have a good equipment good gear for for play it, it feels really like you've you are in, in a truck or uh, that you are in front of a wheel or is it like more casual or there are many types of you know like uh, like modes in game yeah so just that's just the people who are not so familiar with the game okay. well most people who really are deep into simulation driving prefer to drive with a steering wheel it's no matter what driving game you consider a steering wheel always makes a difference to make things more real. This is just the case with our games. Uh, but at the same time, because a steering wheel may be owned by 5-10% players, we need to make an experience that's accessible to a player just you know, playing on the keyboard or playing on a game controller. And we try to do that, we try to approach the gameplay difficulty from to cover both sides of the spectrum, both ends of the spectrum. Uh, a steering wheel makes a difference, but it's also the game itself that's different from other driving games. Typically you would race through some circuit or fight through some harsh environment. In our game it's all about following the rules of proper driving. It's about slowly, slower moving vehicle, sitting higher above the uh, tarmac. So your perspective is different, your instincts need to work differently than if you are racing for the first spot in a race. So it's a unique experience in that way and the game is not just about driving, this is just one aspect. You know, you see the short term experience is driving, the longer term things are exploration of the world. The world is huge and many people find you know, satisfaction in exploring every little corner of the world. For many people the important aspect is also being able to tune and prettify, decorate the trucks inside, outside, because they love to customize their gaming experience. For many people, the, the importance is in growing the business because the, one of the aspects of the game is that you start like a poor wannabe truck driver, and if you play, if you drive well, you earn money to buy your first truck, and if you play, continue playing well, you buy a fleet of trucks, you hire more drivers and you become a king of a big company. So for many people they realize their little dream of being rich <laughs> in the game, of building a sort of an empire in the trucking sense, in the, in the economy sense. So all these things combined together probably keep people hooked for this phenomenon of let's do one more ride, let's do one more delivery and then I will go to sleep and before they know it, it's two in the morning and they are still not asleep. So, so I think the game works as a sort of cocktail of things that together make sense for the players to come back for it. Yeah, so it's you can learn some <laughs> driving rules from the game, you can learn some economic aspects. So maybe from this perspective, it's, it's, it is interesting. Like, it's not only entertainment, it's, it's also kind of learning you like young people or something like that yeah y you, you want to some uh, you want to add something yeah yeah well this is one of the actually one of the things that we use as an argument when talking to trucking companies or companies that we would like to invite to the game to have their license for a truck or some yeah. let's say tires or something in the game uh, that the game is non-violent but actually promoting uh, good values and promoting a proper behavior and actually, th there is a class of people who like to play their games th th this way. It's a break from the usual, I'm a criminal and I'm doing something wrong. It's something that people welcome because it's closer to their real life, everyday real life. And it's still a fantasy world where they can become a trucker and earn enough money for their first truck in two hours of driving. So this is a high level of fantasy there. But it's not breaking the rules of like normal physics and breaking the rules of normal life. And I think in this way, I'm also able to satisfy a little bit of my need for being a good person and not, not you know, teaching kids weird things. So, so as a son of a teacher, I feel good about making games that teach people good things. 
and um, what can you tell a little bit more about the physics aspects how detailed are they I mean uh, if you're using of course a steering wheel or uh, pedals and how detailed is how how much uh, immersion is it in well we have two guys with PhD titles in the physics, okay. working on the physics uh, uh, part of the engine, and they are still building on top, on top of existing code that we are using as a library. So there is, but you can say that about any driving, and there's a lot of research going into physical simulations, and we are not an exception. Uh, we simulate everything from the contact of the tire with the with the street surface to the uh, power elements inside the powertrain, inside uh, the engine. So uh, the dynamics of the vehicle is, we think, simulated very well. We had very positive reaction from actual truck drivers who, I think, in many cases, compare it to their real life experience and find it satisfactory. We're never satisfied. We want more, so we don't you know, keep uh, staying in the same spot we are now adding uh, better modulation uh, of uh, fuel consumption based on some physics properties of the of the tires this is one such example where you're never done you always go deeper at the same time we don't want to make a game that you have to have a driving license to play we want to be for it to be accessible so we need to make sure that the game uh, like assists you in ways that you can play it as a 10 year old kid just discovering it or as a disabled person just trying for something to do that's interesting for, for them. So it's it's always a balancing act between like deeper precise simulation and making things accessible for people just with initial interest in the topic. And lastly, have you ever driven a big truck? I, I have, I don't have a driving license for trucks but I was fortunate to be invited uh, while visiting Swedish truck manufacturer Scania. I was invited to take a few rounds on their what they call demo center, which is a specific uh, piece of, of road that's like three, four kilometers stretch that you can become a driver for a while and, and, and just test a few vehicles. We also, when, when we record uh, truck engine sounds, which we have to do because people want maximum fidelity and maximum precision so what we do we take a bunch of microphones hook them up on a truck and inside the truck and into the engine area and we record the sounds for that we borrow trucks from our friends at truck dealerships and stuff so sometimes even though i shouldn't <laughs> I'm, i've driven a bit of the trucks during those days like on a separate parking lot not in public not on public roads because everybody is interested, how, how does it feel to be a truck driver? Is it very different? And indeed, it is very different. The trucks are super powerful monsters. In fact, if you don't hook them with 20, 40 tons of material, the tractor is a very powerful thing. It can turn on a dime. I've seen them do tricks and things, not myself behind the wheel, but a colleague of ours is an experienced truck driver who really can do crazy things behind the wheel. So. I can appreciate the power and the magnificence of a truck and I felt some of it behind the wheel too. Okay, so how do you encourage people to try American truck when it's released? Uh, well, we hope for a good reception for sure. Uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2 was a success that we absolutely didn't expect to see. It was a surprise. Even after 10 years of making these, these games, it was a surprise for us. It has helped us to grow the company, to take on more challenges, to take, to go deeper in simulation, to go wider in, in uh, support of the game with new features and new content. American Truck is building on this legacy. At the same time, it's a new con well coming back to the continent that we with our games or earlier games uh, left for some years. And the United States and Northern America in general, or all of America in general, are trucking countries. There is so much stuff being hauled on, on trucks. The economy is totally depending on trucks. And it's the promised land of trucking. This is the iconic area. The trucks are the iconic vehicles. They have 
these cool shapes that everybody recognizes from the movies. So in some ways, uh, we hope for even a warmer reception for more global appeal of the American themed game as compared to the Euro Truck Simulator game, which are, to be honest, mostly interesting for Europeans and their uh, vision of what the truck should be on the street, on the road. The American trucks are known worldwide and recognized worldwide as a, like a kind of iconic thing. So we, we hope that the reception is going to be good, for sure. So do you expect bigger success than, than uh, Eurotrack? <laughs> you know, the, the one thing about SCS is that we are not betting the farm on it. We are playing it safe, so it's not like we die if the game uh, bombs. We hope it doesn't bomb, we hope that the success can be comparable to Eurotrack 2. But the market is evolving. People are, you know, playing more on mobiles than they were a few years ago, or or uh, tablets than they were playing a few years ago. The new generation of players may not even be aware of PC as a gaming platform. For them, mobile is for everything. So who knows what happens in a few years when we try to still be the dinosaurs pushing the PC games, when in fact the players are not there anymore. But since we are catering to mostly older aid audience modes to the older guys. I hope we are doing fine and I hope that we can at least repeat the long term in the long term the success of Eurotruck to it. Would definitely be appreciated if people support us. Because if they want something, if they want us to continue making the games, they need to support us making them. Okay, so thanks a lot for interesting kind of history and uh, kind of teaching things, yeah, because the the game is is teaching actually some people and uh, yeah my cameraman uh, played Eurotrack before he attended to the driving license uh, lessons and <laughs> he was he, he recorded some gameplay he was beaten in the comments what what are you doing <laughs> it's it's not good yeah at all and after after uh, getting the the license he so some yeah right i'm talking right he saw some <laughs> some things that they've done wrong before yeah so so he's uh, the game actually actually teaches uh, guys yeah so great job from you and i hope it would be more uh, developed in the future uh, in all uh, whole aspects yeah physics uh, teaching aspects and and gameplay yeah so thanks a lot and uh, wish you wish you all the best Thanks to the guys from Video Testy for taking interest in our game. I would like to say hi to all players and fans of our games. Uh, it's great to have you. It's great that you are taking interest in the new stuff that we are developing. And we hope to keep making you happy and coming back to play our games. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>